Okay, everybody. So last time uh, we built this little car, uh, which moves uh, with manual operation. So that means if I push it, it rolls and it moves. Okay. Uh, to talk about this, uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about how about how it actually works. So to talk about how it works, we need to talk about forces. Okay. A force is essentially basically a push or a pull that causes an object to move faster or slower, to change direction, or to change the size or shape. So for example, there is a force right now on this object that when I apply it, it causes it to move. Imagine a balloon. If I had a balloon and I blew the balloon up, it would not only that force of me blowing into it would not only change the size of the balloon, but it also changes the shape of the balloon. So these are forces. And you also can't talk about forces without talking about uh, this guy called Isaac Newton. Um, he's this really old white guy who was around like 300 years ago. Um, and he was pretty smart. He came up with these three lo uh, three laws of motion um, that are pretty important to uh, everything that we understand about objects today. Okay, so there's three laws. The first law is an object uh, will remain at rest if there's no force on it. So that means basically if it's sitting there, unless I remove the table or I tip the table or I push on it or something, it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to stay there. The second part of that same law, the first law, is that if there is a motion, if there's a force applied to the object, it causes a motion. And it will continue to move unless there's another force applied. Now that's weird because I applied, a, based on what he said, I applied a force and it moved. And he's saying, unless there's another force uh, to stop it, it's going to keep moving forever. But it didn't hit anything. Nothing stopped it. Nothing that we saw at least. So why did the car actually stop right now? What force is being applied to the car to make it stop? Because based on Isaac Newton's law, the car should have kept moving, right? So if you want to think about it for a second, hit the pause button. When you're ready, hit play again. All right, so if you thought about it, there's actually a couple forces in play that are causing the car to stop, right? Even though I pushed it, it's not going to keep going forever, at least not in Earth, where we have a, a really important force called gravity. Gravity is what essentially pulls us back down to Earth, right? It's what causes things to, to, to fall down. And even though you can't see it, that gravity is pulling down on the car. And slowly, it's slowing it down until it stops. There's also additional force um, of, of uh, friction that's being caused by the wheels on the table surface. And that also slows the car down as well. Okay, uh, Newton's second law. Uh, basically says that depending on the amount of force that you have on an object, it's also going to change its acceleration. And that's also related to how much mass an object has. So if I push it a little bit, it's going to move a little bit. If I add more force to it, it's going to have higher acceleration. Okay. Um, there's a formula for that, which you will learn sometime in the future. Force equals mass times acceleration. It's a really cool uh, formula that you can use for a, to calculate a lot of stuff. Scientists use it all the time. And the third law, which some of you have probably heard, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Okay? So in other words, if I push here, something has to happen to it. That force transferred from my finger, it transferred to the car to make it move. Now, a more interesting way to think about this is, and this is what everyone can do also to your cars if you already built one, is I'm actually going to uh, pierce a hole here through my box, and I'm going to make it wind-powered. So instead of having to push it, I can, I can power the car just by using wind. I'm going to take a sheet of paper, just a regular sheet of paper, and let's pierce it through here. And here, it's a little bit big. I get to shorten it up a little bit, but I'll show you what I mean. I can blow on the sail of the car, and that's going to cause it to move. So, okay, so here's what's happening when I blow in this direction. Right? It causes the car to move, but 
it's it's not the it's not just the wind from my mouth. So what happens is when I push, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The sail is holding is pushing against the wind, right? And the and the wind is actually pushing forward. But the sail is stuck to here, right? So as they're pushing against each other, it's going to end up also causing this sail which is attached with this beam which is attached to the car to continue moving that way. So again, for every action, there's an equal, equal and opposite reaction. If I blow on it just a little bit, it moves a little bit. But if I blow on it much harder, it's going to move much faster. All right. Cool. On the next one, we'll build a different car that's uh, not a wind-powered one. We'll do a... I don't know yet. We'll figure it out. Come check it out.